Hello guys. Good to have you again. So today I'm gonna to finally show you how to create your own water VFX asset. Something like this. Arise. So before we dive in, have you ever heard about personal music? And if your answer is no, then I guess you are definitely missing a lot, but this is what I want you guys to know. Personal music offers high quality tracks used in Marvel, trailers and TV shows. Can you believe that? Yeah. And what I personally find interesting is the amazing conversational AI tool that allows you to easily generate and find perfect track to match the action or mood you are trying to convey in your video project. And the good thing is that it is very affordable. So check out this video description, there you find a link to get started. So let's get started, shall we? First, I will add a water texture from Freepik. Freepik offers diverse selection of AI-generated graphics, including high-quality images. So I'll continue by selecting the water image that I'll use as my texture. And now I click the download button. Now that's we have added the water texture, let's get started. Next, I go to the 3D asset and add the 3D sphere model. I turn off the texture visibility and go to the 3D model panel to add the water texture. Now that we have successfully added the water texture to the 3D model, it's time to add some distortion and water animation. First, add the 3D camera folder and move the model and texture layers into it. Next, I go to the effect store and add the water effect. The amplitude controls the amount or intensity of the water distortion applied to the 3D model. So, I add animation by adding keyframes to the direction property. Keyframing the direction property allows you to create animation that changes the flow's position, just like water in real life. I reduce the speed amount of the water distortion. And with that, here's a playback review. You can choose to add more changes to the water form by increasing the intensity and also by increasing the octaves in the FBM, which generates realistic water details and distortions. Now that we've created a natural water noise pattern, Let's move to the next step. This time, I'll add water distortion to the texture layer. I start by adding the rain effect, increasing the intensity and distortion, and reducing the rain flash to zero. By applying the rain effect to the texture, I was able to create water distortion within the 3D model. I'll reduce the visibility of the rain effect by reducing the blending. I'm also going to add the raindrops effect. Here I'll only tweak some few settings, such as changing the blur type, enabling dynamic mode, and adding more intensity. Finally, I add the wave warp effect. The wave warp panel gives you control in creating realistic water movements and distortion by changing the type of wave warp. I'll choose the smooth noise type. I adjust the width and phase amount, tweak the direction, and turn off the edge mode to get a satisfying look. Now that we've added all the water features to our composition, Here's a playback review. Now I'll show you how to composite the water VFX asset into your footage. I start by making a video where I visualize myself controlling water with my hand. Before starting the editing process, I add bookmarks to the start and end points of the animation.
Since we've already created a water asset, I'll import the project file into our new timeline. I adjust the water keyframes by extending the animation length. I use the 3D model transformation panel to properly position and resize the water asset. Now that everything is in place, I start by adding the 2D mesh warp animation, which adds realistic water movements to the asset. I reduce the number of rows and increase the quality amount. So, I add two keyframes at the point where I added the bookmark. I zoomed out the screen for better control over the mesh warp animation. So I gradually pull down the water asset at the first keyframe. If you'd like, you can add more tweaks to the rows and columns to create a more professional look, but for now I'll stick to the basics. I'll also add keyframes to the 3D model control panel to enhance the water's motion. Let's finalize the animation by slamming the water asset back to the ground using the rows and columns. And here's a playback review. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it looks cool. Before adding the final effect, I'll go to the footage and make the color work visible. So I head to the effect store and add the basic ripple effect to enhance the visual impact of the scene. I reduce the ripple count and add keyframes to the evolution property to create a shockwave animation. Finally, I'll add adjustments layer and trim it to the starting point of the animation and add the shake effect. I reduce the intensity of the shake effect. And enable the tiling option. I'm going to quickly make some adjustments to the movement and positioning of the water asset in the transformation panel to enhance its animation. And here's our final playback.
If you found this tutorial helpful, kindly give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more creative videos. Until next time, peace.